Aloha. I'm Naka Nathaniel, editor at large here at Civil Beat. I'm joined by Stuart Yurton, the senior business reporter for Civil Beat. And Stuart and I have been talking quite a bit about the film industry here in Hawaii. And one of the things that we've been concentrating on is pieces of legislation that are set up to be uh, looked at at this year's session. And one of the bills that we've been passing back and forth has been Senate Bill 3265. And Stuart, this is an interesting piece of legislation. Yes, it's very interesting. Uh, this would do a few things, um, as we've discussed. Uh, first of all, there is a, this addresses the state's incentives for the motion picture industry. The incentives are very um, uh, generous. It's one of the biggest, uh, they're, they're tax credits, and it's one of the biggest tax credits that we have to promote certain industries, uh, second only to uh, solar and re renewable energy. So it's a big deal. It's a way to diversify the economy. This industry employs thousands of people. So this is a big deal. Yeah. And raising the cap is significant. It doesn't raise it a lot, but it would raise it from $55 million to $60 million a year. So this change in this pre-existing legislation, so this is a big deal. And there's many other things that are a big deal about this. Yes. But why, you know, the piece of legislation already exists. Why is this suddenly important for this year's session? Well, this is important. Well, let's, let's, let's just go back to something you wrote. Yeah. You wrote something, um, and maybe you can talk a little bit about what you wrote, because then it'll okay. segue into this. Sure thing. So before living in Hawaii, we were in Georgia, and right. the state of Georgia had very generous tax incentives for film and, uh, film and television productions. And it was uncapped, and, but it, it encouraged so much television and film you know, to move to Georgia. And so all of the Marvel movies have been shot in Georgia recently because big budget productions are huge recipients of this tax legislation. So that exists in Georgia. And so right. there are other states that have been looking to you know, see if they can't pick off some of these larger productions. And so... Right. Well, Hawaii has the same thing. But you were talking in your, in your column about uh, getting more Native Hawaiian voices, getting more Native yeah. Hawaiian themes really um, using the incentives not just to get productions, and we have Hawaii Five-0, um, NCIS, other movies that are shot here. Your idea was more Native Hawaiian stories told yeah. by Native Hawaiians. Yeah, and that's one of the interesting things that's happened is one of the most acclaimed television programs uh, the last year was uh, Reservation Dogs, which was done by Sterling Harjo and Taika Waititi. And one of the things that they did is that they insisted on employing indigenous North Americans on their set, not only as actors, but also as directors, as writers. You know, everybody on the set almost was an indigenous uh, person from North America. And so this is one of the things that's interesting that looks like has popped up in this piece of legislation has been a Native Hawaiian film advisory council. Right. So that's the big difference with this and the context of this. So let's put a uh, a bookmark on that, Native Hawaiian Advisory Council. Mm -hmm. One of the big questions uh, that comes up uh, from time to time is, why don't these productions do more to support residents, employ residents? Why don't we have more residents in the key positions, like director, uh, producer, these so-called above-the-line uh, positions, which they're called just because it's where, where it appears on the on the um, budget but of, the, of the film, but why don't we have more of these? And why haven't we built more of an infrastructure or uh, job base uh, for these type of jobs? And why do so many people come here and then leave? So they're not really residents. Um, it came up recently during a um, uh, House Finance Committee hearing the uh, chairman of the Economic Development Committee jumped in, really started grilling the head of the Creative Industry Division for the state, uh, Georgia Skinner, saying, you know, why isn't this happening? What's going on? And, and, and Skin Georgia was really not um, ready in a way completely to, to deal with this. She answered as best she could and said, we are trying to do workforce development. Uh, something came up last session where the Ways and Means Committee, they wanted legislation that they said would help with workforce and ended up with something with the state in a bit of a uh, 
a kerfuffle with the state film commissioner, Donnie Dawson. So this comes up from time to time. And this bill would address it by establishing, so we have this Hawaii advisory count, film advisory council that it would establish. And this has a lot of people you would expect um, on it. They're appointed by the governor, someone from the, each county's film office, the state film office, union people, other people that you would mm -hmm. expect in the industry. Right. So that's all pretty standard. Um, but then you get to this other uh, piece where it also sets up a, what are they calling it? Um, the Native Hawaiian what is it, Advisory Council, I believe. Film Advisory Council. Film Advisory right. Council. Mm -hmm. And the idea is, if it is a project with a Native Hawaiian, let's see, Native Hawaiian content contains a minimum of 51% or more content of a film, media, or television production, and is written, directed, and produced, and includes actors of Native Hawaiian descent, then it qualifies as Native Hawaiian content. And in that case, can get um, more support than the normal production. So those productions, on most productions, there's a $17 million cap for each project. Right. So this is the one of the incentives, that if it is Native Hawaiian content as deemed by this council, yes. then the cap does not apply. The cap does not apply. So what is the cap? So the cap, $17 million, or let's, let's just make it $20 million for easy. And what kind of numbers are we talking about for tax incentives? Yes, yeah, so that's, that's what we're going to do. Yeah. So, so the tax incentives are up to 20%, uh, or it's 20% or more, 20% on Oahu, higher on neighbor islands. On, yeah, yeah. yeah, the islands. Yeah. On, um, of your budget. So if you spend a dollar, you get a quarter back from the state. It's a refund. It, they call it a tax credit, but it's a refundable tax credit. So it's essentially a refund, just a check from the state. So if you're talking, uh, let's say it's instead of the, instead of getting 17 million, let's say you got 20 million. If you spend 100 million dollars on Oahu in a movie, which is conceivable these days, or a big TV production, you could get um, 20 million dollars back. And it really supports the way we won't discuss how they do film financing and television financing. Because that's it, a black box that no it, one wants yeah, to Yeah, well, yeah, no, we don't want to talk about it. But it, but it can really support a, a project. It can become almost like a down payment mm -hmm. that you can use to borrow money against. So, and essentially put together something like this. So, it's a big deal. Now, you know, the we were kind of talking about it, saying, well, what? Could this conceivably be? Is there anything where you could have, I don't know, a TV series, $100 million, with primarily Native Hawaiian writer, director, producer, actors? And there is something yeah. that's actually being shot in New Zealand. Right, right. Chief of War. Yep. Jason Momoa. Yep. Why could could this help bring this massive TV production, Apple TV, right. to Hawaii? Right, right. We don't. And know. they had filmed some of it, you know, on Hawaii Island. Right. And so, but then they had to leave because they had bumped up against, you know, their caps. So right. the incentives to remain in Hawaii, you know, weren't there. However, New Zealand was offering, you know, plenty of incentives for them to come. I mean, that's the unfortunate thing is that you know that's the economics is that you do have to offer. Sure. Generous it's, incentives to have these films be shot. It's a race. So this could be a really big deal, you know, yeah. and it could do what your column suggested. Yeah. So you just kind of write these things and <laughs> That's right. they appear. Now this well, is, it's so important to, to yeah. diversify, you know, obviously our economy in Hawaii. And this is one of the things where the creative industries, you know, really have shown a lot of growth. And it's one yes. of the things that just spurred along. And that was another thing that you had been talking about, you know, earlier about, you know, some of the efforts to spur those local hires, which are so important right. you know, for Hollywood productions is that, and where do those, you know, local hires, you know, come from? Because they have to be trained. Right. Well, no, that's right. And there are, I mean, they have to be trained and there are um, efforts being done to get more people in those and, and prepare uh, local residents for those higher level jobs. Aside from the Jason Momoas, um, who are already famous, um, you know, Gerard Elmore and his group is really... Um, 
doing a lot to uh, cultivate a uh, base of directors, writers, producers here. Mm -hmm. So that's a really good effort. Very, very small. And it's, it's like, how do we get, how do we get, how do you train somebody and prepare somebody to basically take over a major production? And we're getting there slowly, but it, it, it takes time. And um, as you noted, a lot of money because other places are competing. Yeah. Yeah, it's a strong competitive field, and you know pieces of legislation like that you know could help Hawaii, especially yeah. as they try and you know set a horizon you know closer to you know twenty forty twenty thirty eight. Yeah, we'll makes mention a that. So, so you you mentioned the sunset, and what you you noted that in the bill. What is so the sunset is you know the piece of legislation that had been passed before you know had been set at twenty twenty six. Right. And this is legislation that had been signed by Governor Ige back in uh, 2018, 2019. Right. And so Hollywood productions obviously have a long timeline, take a lot of you know time and effort to get them up and running. And so the fact that this one was you know is sunsetted for twenty twenty six puts this piece of legislation on the clock. Right. And so extending, that's part of the motivation for this to be written, is to extend that time horizon, right. you know, farther down. So it goes to 2038, right. so then the productions would have some uh, assurance that this thing's going to be around a while. But again, this could be a really big and, and dramatic uh, bill if it, A, passes, and then B, does re would result in this major TV show um, that's not Hawaii Five O. Right. That's a little bit more Hawaiian. Yeah. Maybe a lot yeah. more Hawaiian <laughs> right. than Hawaii Five O. <laughs> if it if it came here, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And it also shows that it addresses this question of wait a minute, this is a Hawaiian story. Why is it being shot at least partly in New Zealand? And also, why is um, you know what's up with other places being able to to pose as Hawaii? Right. right. I mean. Right. When you think yeah. about it, it's kind of crazy, right? Yeah, yeah it like, really is. Well, well, I appreciate all the work that you've done covering this and uh, look forward to your continued coverage. Well, thank uh, you. On Civil Beat. Yes, thank you. Thanks. All right.